many ways, our sun is just a typical star. Like millions of others in our galaxy, it has an average size, an average age, and only a slightly above average brightness. So when we compare it to the many weird and wonderful stars in our galaxy, it really doesn't seem that special at all. But it is. It's the most perfect star we've ever seen. For hundreds of years, we've searched the night sky and never found a star quite like it. For one reason alone, life. Our sun is the only star we've seen that is supporting life. And whether you consider that to be a sign of divine creation or just mathematical absurdity, the reality cannot be denied. When it comes to life, the sun is a perfect star, a title unrivaled by any other star in the universe. The average properties of our sun are very much a misdirection on the many ways in which it is special. For one, it has no partner, no companion star to dance with. And that's a lot more uncommon than you might think. We believe up to 85% of all stars in the universe are actually grouped together in binary or more systems, making solitary stars like our sun an exception rather than the rule. Being alone comes with its advantages, a calmer solar system filled with less chaos and unpredictability. In astronomy, anything that's heavier than helium is known as a metal, and our sun is rich with it. Far richer than you'd expect for a similar star of its type and age. We still aren't sure why it's so rich, but it's likely because it formed from the shockwave of a supernova nearly 5 billion years ago, with the supernova creating the heavier elements that we see today. These elements are scattered throughout the solar system, and the planets are largely made from them, but most of these elements remain locked within our sun. From what we can tell, it contains over 67 elements, over half the known periodic table. We think it could have as much as 30% of the Earth's mass in platinum, and anywhere as much as half a percent in gold. That's the same as a pile of gold the size of the Indian Ocean. Now that's what you call a rich star. But why is being metal rich so important? Well, it's actually to do with us, the planets. The high abundance of metals has allowed the rocky planets and even gas giants to form, since they too are thought to have rocky or metal cores. We're not even sure if the number of planets in our solar system is considered normal, because our ability to see exoplanets around other stars is still very limited and an evolving area of research. We can say, however, that having this many gas giants, especially beyond Earth, plays a big role in protecting the inner rocky planets from outside threats, maybe being an important reason as to why life has been able to evolve here in the first place. By far the biggest protector in our solar system is the sun itself. With its immense size, it dwarfs all the planets, even the gas giants, and provides a huge magnetic field that causes a constant stream of particles to be ejected in the form of the solar wind. An invisible stream forever pushing outwards through the planets and beyond. This stream forms a bubble around our solar system known as the heliosphere. And although it has many effects, like creating the aurora borealis here on Earth, one of its main functions is to shield us from radiation coming from the rest of the galaxy. In 2012, the Voyager 1 spacecraft, the furthest man-made object, reached the very edge of this boundary around 121 times the distance from us to the sun. As soon as it started to cross this boundary, it was bombarded with cosmic radiation 40 times more powerful than inside the heliosphere, showing us just how much the sun is protecting us from the rest of the galaxy. Yet, not just any star could do this. If our sun was too small, the heliosphere would be too weak, and if it was too big, it would rip off our entire atmosphere. So it's a fine balance. 
being neither too big nor too small, but just right, a Goldilocks star of just the right size. Sometimes we also mention the term Goldilocks zone, the orbit around a star in which water can exist in liquid form, a tiny band of temperature only 100 degrees Celsius wide. Earth is the only planet that sits in the Goldilocks zone around our star, which is why none of the other planets have been able to sustain life. But you might think, what if our sun was a bit smaller or a bit larger? Surely we could still thrive around such a star even if the habitable zone was a bit shorter or a bit longer, right? Well, you would think so, but there's actually a few problems with this. Let's say the habitable zone was further away because the sun was actually hotter. Well, hotter stars burn brighter. And you've probably heard the saying, the flame that burns twice as bright burns half as long. And that's kind of true with stars. Though a star with twice the mass of our sun would actually burn 10 times as bright and live five times quicker, meaning it would die after only two billion years, around half the age of the Earth today, which is just when multicellular life was beginning to evolve on the planet. Being twice the mass of our sun, it would also have a blue color to its light, which would mean that plants would probably evolve to use a pigment known as carotenoids, a pigment best at absorbing blue light. Carotenoids have a reddish color, which would mean that all plants on Earth would have evolved to make the world look like a place trapped in perpetual autumn, or maybe something more akin to War of the Worlds. But carotenoids aren't the most efficient way of converting light into chemical energy. For that, it's actually chlorophyll, the pigment which gives plants their green color, a pigment that absorbs both red and blue light. Given that plants form the base of all life on this planet, it's critical that they convert as much energy as possible into chemical energy, which can then be passed along the food chain. So a planet with red plants wouldn't be as efficient as a planet with green ones like Earth. A blue star just doesn't give us the highest conversion of light energy into chemical energy. For that, we need a white star, one that is not too hot or too cold, but just the right temperature and color like our sun. Being a perfect size, temperature and color aren't the only things that make the sun special. We also have to consider its place within the greater galaxy. As we now know, the galaxy is not always a friendly place. In fact, the closer to the center we get, the more hostile it becomes, with dense clusters of old stars that could ignite our solar system from huge amounts of infrared and X-ray radiation. Some of the most dangerous regions are actually the spiral arms, where there are very high concentrations of star births and deaths. Supernovas are much more frequent in these areas, and traversing them is a bit like crossing a galactic minefield, never knowing when one's going to go off in your face. And yet, our sun dances elegantly in an almost perfect circular orbit, avoiding an elliptical one that would have it periodically crossing the spiral arms over time. Instead, it's circular and rotates just at the right speed the same rate as the spiral arms, meaning we very rarely have to cross one. We also happen to be far enough from the galactic core that we're never exposed to the intense radiation there. It's as if the sun is orbiting the galaxy in its very own Goldilocks zone, a term that has been coined the galactic habitable zone. And around 95% of all the stars in our galaxy orbit outside this zone making them extremely unfavorable for complex, intelligent life to evolve, and making our sun one of only 5% of stars in our galaxy capable of nurturing such life. And that's not even including all the other things we've mentioned up until this point. So considering everything for just a moment, the chance of our sun being a solitary star, a stable one without a companion, one that's metal rich with plentiful planets and gas giants ordered in just the right way 
to protect the delicate inner rocky ones. A star with just the right size and temperature so that liquid water can exist and lush green planets can thrive, all whilst having a heliosphere strong enough to protect it all, without being too overpowering to destroy it. Orbiting the galaxy in just the right way, one that's not too elliptical, too fast or too slow, and one that's just far enough away from the core so as not to be destroyed. There's only one conclusion. Change almost anything about it, and we would almost certainly not be here. So the next time you feel its shine, feel its warmth on your skin, just remember, the sun is not just a star, it's the perfect star.